Live from PFG Television Center at Red 13 Studios, welcome to Scorch's PFG TV. I am Lord Dugman W. Godspeed. Tonight, on another exciting episode, two-time Stanley Cup winner and NHL legend, Scott Young. Also, you know him from Something About Mary and over 20 other motion pictures. It's Boston funny man, Steve Sweeney. And special musical guest, Limelight Magazine Song of the Year award winner, Sarah Lakeeter of The Problematics. And of course, legendary disciple of rock and roll greatness, it's Scorch's co-host, Sebastian. So let's give it up for your host, Scorch. Yeah, baby. Get some. Welcome. Welcome, my friends. Here we are. The very first episode, I'm going to talk about this in a second, but this is actually the very first episode that we are filming to be live on Fox 25! Oh, yeah! Woo! Good to see you, man. We made it, we made it. We made it to Timo the Timo uh, And you all know my pal, Sib Hashin, right? Give it up for Sib hey, everybody. Since we're now on Fox 25, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. Uh, what's up with you, man? What's happening in the life of Sibnish? Well, I just want to tell you right off that I had the best time reading Boat Hack by one of our first guests, oh, yeah. Jimmy Dunn. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's a couple of pages in here. One line is that it's worth the whole price. So if you get a chance to get it, you know, for us guys, we like to bring something in the, uh, you know, the Bacausa and, <laughs> and something we can leave there and read a couple, you know, pages every day. This is the book. Thanks, Jimmy, for coming on. Thanks for writing another book. And you know what? I'd love to see a boat hack, too. Because you know, it's one of those books was like, you know, I was sorry it was ended. Plus, you're in the bathroom a long time. Many, many times during the day. We already discussed that. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, for those that haven't followed along, Jimmy, I asked him to come and be part of this show again, uh, this first uh, taping for Fox. But Jimmy uh, is actually going to, he's, he's in a media freeze because he got signed to be in a sitcom on another network. But it's actually a, it's a prime time sitcom. I mean, a prime time sitcom. See, he bounced so. that off our show. Oh, he, he admitted that. He, okay. Every other line was Coach PFG TV, and they got pissed <laughs> off at him, but they still let him stay, you know what I mean? So what else is going on in your life? Well, you know, I'm really excited about tonight's show. Yeah. You know, we've got a professional hockey player on who's and won two Stanley Cups. Yeah, yeah. A local guy, too, an yeah. American, yeah. A, rare, <laughs> a rare breed. And we got the fantastic Sarah Lakita band. How, yep, you know How good mean. is that? And Mr. Steve Sweeney's in the house. Steve Sweeney's in the house. Huh? Boston legend, big movie star. Steve Sweeney's here, y'all. So that basically uh, fills the deal. You know what's up with my life these days? I, uh, I crash my Jeep. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I crashed my Jeep. Doing no more than five miles an hour. I crashed my Jeep. Who was in the Jeep with you? Uh, a friend of mine. All right. You know, you first, the, I, have this, I have a new young lady in my life. Uh, hey, Kimmy, nice to see you. Uh, and uh, Sibby, the first day Sibby met her, Sibby gave him one of her, one of her one, uh, Sibby gave her one of his pat, did, uh, pat downs. And for no reason at all, all of a sudden, Sibby gets out of the bar stool and says, oh, I gotta pat you down. And I'm like, I noticed though, as I think about it, he didn't say pat you down. What did I say? Pet you down. Pet you, down. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Well, she's a sweetheart. Congratulations. So, well, thank you, man. You know what? Thank you very much. Uh, we, Your mother's got to be really happy. Well, it's good you know? because I, ha I was finally able to stop dating her. So, <laughs> so that's a good thing, you know. Uh, anyhow, yeah, we got a great show today. <laughs> yes, that reminds me. You're a space shot. No, that reminds me it's time for weird news, folks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, let's start off with the human statue story, okay? Uh, in Australia, you know human statues. Human when, statue. When, when people, they put on they the put green the white, makeup. They put the white yeah, stuff they, in there. They freeze, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So there was one in Australia, and this kid, this kid knew that he was a human statue. So he tried to be one of those, you know, those pestering. <laughs> so eventually, after touching him all over the place, nothing inappropriate, uh, he gave him a wet willy, you know, one of these things, in the ear. Oh, I hate those. So the statue broke form, okay? The statue got up off the pedestal, punched the guy right in the mouth, uh, broke his jaw, and knocked all of his teeth out, you know what I mean? So uh, what I would like to do is, at this point, I would like to issue the very first, or the very first, rather, Scorch's PFG TV listener-viewer challenge. 
<laughs> Within the next two weeks after you see this show, I am going to be somewhere in downtown Boston as a human statue. So, here's the challenge. You have to punch every single statue that you see from now to the next two weeks in downtown Boston. If you are the lucky one to punch me, I won't punch you back, but you're gonna get a huge, huge special prize that the Scorch's PFG TV lawyers are working on getting us right now. So, as we speak. As we speak, so make sure you punch every statue you see. Everyone. You can get the grand prize, folks, yeah! We're on in the middle of the night, and a lot of people have just been drinking as they watch the show, so you know what? We're not really gonna give you any prize, but I guarantee you some people are still gonna go around punching them. Stop statues. punching Hell you. yeah. You know, those are our listeners. We love you, those are our listeners. Uh, the world's strongest cup of coffee, Death Wish Coffee. Have you heard about that? I just heard about that, brand new. <laughs> you just heard about it. When? <laughs> Last week. Tell us about Death Wish Coffee. Okay, this guy's Death Wish Coffee, he's got the, uh, the skull and crossbones, all right, and he's he's ch made a challenge to everybody else. This is the act, the strongest cup of coffee you're ever gonna drink. I saw 600 milligrams of caffeine. All right. Uh, see, I don't. I'm one I, in the world of uh, of uh, hallucinogens. I like downs, not ups. Do you like being that up? No, I can't. I do one cup of the real thing a day, and then I'm like, I'm wired. This thing has the strength Maybe the pills, of uh, double the strength of espresso. And it comes with a disclaimer warning the uh, drinkers, believe it or not, to have many sleepless nights. Okay, I mean, that's insane. Uh, you can get it on Amazon right now. $16 or a 16 ounce bag, 20 bucks. Huh? huh? 16 ounce bag? 16 ounce bag, 20 bucks. I'll give you a 20 ounce bag for 40. Uh, you know what? We'll talk about that off here. We can't do this now. Oh, we'll talk about oh, that that's later. Right, we're on. So, we got one final uh, weird news story. This is interesting. Christian Erba of Poland, amazing new world record. This guy drove up, uh, rode his bicycle up 2,754 steps to the top of the Shanghai World Financial Center. One hour and 21 minutes. That's all it took for him to do that. How about that? Unbelievable. You're, you're in good shape. Uh, I wouldn't could do you that. Ride your bike up, you know? What do you do to stay in shape? Um, play drums. Oh, is that what you do? <laughs> Did you ever play it? What bands have you played in? I played in um, Hardcore and Boston. We went Boston. And Dirty Water. Dirty Water, give it up. That's the one we Yeah, all there. right. Anyway, it's a good news, bad news situation. The good news is he did break the record. Great. But obviously, as you can tell, the bad news is nobody ever <clears throat> spoke about it. There you go. Oh. And that, my friends, is today's oh. installment of Weird News. What a hell of a show today, wow, my God. great show. We have got coming up a uh, great comedian, Steve Sweeney. We have got Sarah Lakita, and we're going to be talking about the Arrow Chicks and so much more. And we have got uh, professional athlete Scott Young coming up right next as we continue with more of Scorch's PFG TV. <laughs> back to Scorch's PFG TV. Very special guest right now. Uh, the guest, a uh, pro hockey player. He's got a lot of stuff going on. We're going to let him tell oh, you Oh, I'm really it. excited. Uh, give it up for our pal Scott Young. Oh, yeah. Scotty! Have a seat, man. Uh, very cool. So, uh, a pro hockey player. You might actually be in all the years we've done the show. The very first pro hockey player I think that's ever been on the show. So welcome aboard to uh, Scorch's PFG Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tell us about, uh, your, you started off uh, playing hockey very, very young, and, uh, and it's led into what you're doing now. But tell us about your career. Well, it, it, it's something that uh, I'm proud of uh, playing hockey for so long. I uh, had a 17-year NHL career, which is uh, something I'm proud of. And, and obviously, you have to start young. Uh, playing hockey from five years old. I mean, I have a son that's going through it right now. He just played 74 games as an 11-year-old. So it's something you have to commit to very early on, and uh, it, it, it paid off all that. Uh, well, uh, doing better is going to be his way of having fun. That, that's exactly. I coach uh, at St. Mark's now, high school team, and I want the 
the, all my players to love showing up at the rink every day. And I know from my experience that when I loved showing up to the rink and it was a good experience, I played better. Even at the pro level, it, believe it or not, it, although it's a job, you have to enjoy it. And when you're not enjoying it, if a coach is making it miserable for you, you don't play as well. And that's... You well, know, you, you know, when you said you show up, where did you show up when you were a kid at a rink? What rink was that? Well, I, was, I started off playing in Hudson Mouth. Hudson Mouth, so, okay. A local guy. Yeah, is that nice? American. And then it's just a lot of travel. It's a huge commitment from your parents. You're driving all over the place. That traveling schedule, it kind of lets you know, okay, I can see myself doing this, or is this really not what I want to do? Does it start you in your knowledge or your thought process of becoming a pro if, if, you know, if that's what you really think you want to do? Uh, the first time that I had ever been uh, labeled as a professional hockey player as a sophomore in high school, and I read in a magazine that I was an NHL, you know, prototypical NHL winger, and, you know, of course, I'm Fantastic. thrilled at that, <laughs> reading yeah. that. And, and I, I, although it was a dream, I never really knew that it was a possibility. And then the scouts start to watch you. You start to get recruited to go to college. Uh, and you, you get invited to a lot of different showcase type of tournaments, USA Hockey, and it, it's really a, a, you know, a freight train from that point on. You're really moving forward fast, and uh, a, a very exciting time. So to get to your level, though, you obviously, you know, you've, you're a good player. You know, I mean, not everybody that thinks they're a great player is going to make it that far. Somebody's always competing for your job. Mm -hmm. The players Which and the minors true. are coming up, and they want to make it, and you've got to perform. You have to perform every day. Where would you play your uh, college hockey? I went to Boston University. How many years were you there? Four, I was, four? I was only there two because I left for the Olympics in uh, 1988. Oh, that's fantastic. And I want to talk about the Olympics in just a few seconds. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's talk about it now uh, because it would lead into the question I was going to ask. How uh, has youth hockey or how the people, the players changed? Because, I mean, you know, there's people slapping slap shots now at 100,000 miles an hour, you know what I mean? Have you seen the level of the people coming up the ranks change over the years? I, I think, uh, well, there's some, t speaking of slap shots, there's some technology with the, the equipment out there these days that yeah. make, it makes everyone's yeah. shots a lot faster. But uh, I, I think the, the training and the commitment at a younger age I really learned how to work out. Uh, a lot of it, it, it was kind of natural ability till we get into the NHL, and then it was the whole eating, you know, drinking the protein shakes and riding the bike before games, after games. Started to learn how to do that. These kids now are training with personal trainers and yeah. in, at, at 12 years old. Did you ever miss anything good because you had to train? I can't go to that party because I gotta lift those freaking weights. I missed a lot. Of, I missed <laughs> yeah. a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, but again, you, you got to pick it's your spots, and, yeah. and, and that's perfect. You bring up a reason why a lot, of, a lot of people don't make it. They don't have the commitment to miss the party because they got to play the next morning. Look where we ended up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, exactly. Now, you were talking about, you know, the medicine and all the shakes and the protein. Now, do you think there are steroids in hockey? No. Uh, I, I think the only area that somebody would try it in hockey would probably be the tough guy, the fighter. Uh, I don't see it being... Uh, in hockey at all, but the, the, you've heard a couple of scenarios where fighter, Do they test fighters... They, they have drug tests? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, last time, when I was in the league, they were testing uh, twice a year. Random? And Yeah, yeah, random So testing. I couldn't use my sisters or anything? <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely never play hockey, obviously. That's, other than the fact I can't skate, that's... I, I, pass, so I pass most tests, but maybe not that one. <laughs> well, I, I, there, there is... Uh, I, I tell you what, you, you want to do... You, I mean, I was the type of guy, I'd be in GNC all the time. I'm always looking for a way to get better, yeah. but, but legally, <laughs> right. not nothing illegal. What, what about the injury uh, aspect of hockey? Well, now the whole concussion thing is obviously a, a big issue in every sport, Sports and, and yeah. you know, they're yeah. ta taking care of it, and the, the knowledge is a lot better. But, uh, you know, when I was playing, you know, I got, I got knocked out in Winnipeg, uh, got an elbow to the head, went back to the bench, and sat there. They put an ice bag on my, on my neck, and I looked out and couldn't follow the play. I couldn't follow the puck. I, 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 so brought me in the locker room, said, go to your stall, take your equipment off. I looked around, and I said, I don't know, where am I sitting? So I obviously had a concussion. Yeah. The next day, practice, get oh. on a plane, and go play, play a game. 
Right. That's that's the way it was. Right. Um, so you know, but the injury there's a there's a lot of uh, a lot of injuries you play through in hockey. I think hockey is known for having guys come back from uh, you know play with all kinds of stitches and cuts and just you know sew them up, get them back out there. And that's true. I mean, it happens all the time. How's the equipment changed from your beginnings till now? Well, it's a lot more protective. Everything's a lot bigger, bulkier, and that's a subject that's been brought up a lot. Is does everybody feel like they're wearing an Iron Man suit? out there and that is that why there's more injuries you just feel like you can go out there and recklessly hit everybody and you'll be fine um, back in the days you know a long time ago they used to just have these little cab they're barely yeah. shoulder pads yeah. now it's yeah. you know you look pads. like no helmets yeah. Right. Just tell us the first time you won a Stanley Cup you must say I made it it worked this is what I wanted it felt like it was unattainable yeah, uh, yeah. you know we had I had never won a playoff round uh, and then we went on to win it. And then after that, it felt like, okay, I know, I know what it feels like, I know it can be done, and then you just want it even more and more. Okay, go back. Three, two, one, all right, the buzzer ring, the buzzer goes off, you guys win the Stanley Cup. What is that feeling? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, we, we won it with, uh, in Colorado, <laughs> we won it, and we won it in Florida. And the feeling is that we won it on an overtime goal Good. Uh, Good for you. And I was on the ice, and it's just, you're just throwing equipment everywhere. And I don't know if you remember, in Florida, that was the year of the rat. They had all these plastic rats yeah. because Florida, <laughs> in, the, in the locker room, uh, one of the guys from Florida killed a rat, and there was a whole story. So I remember getting hit in the eye. There were all the rats <laughs> come flying rat. on. I get hit in the eye, but, you know, you don't, you don't care. You, you, but it, it was really a, a tremendous, tremendous feeling. Uh, you go through the whole kind of ceremony, you're hugging everybody. Uh, and I remember what, what a, a great story about this is my dad, who, had, who passed years ago, was there. And when we came on, you know, it's a rink of 17,000 people. My dad uh, opened the door for us to let our team off the oh, ice. Nice. Somehow we managed to get nice. down there and open the good gate to let the team memory. off. Yeah. And that was the first person I saw when I came off the ice, and it was, it was really a, a nice thing. Which one was a better feeling for you? Probably well, the first one the, the, no well, the Colorado. Well, here's the situation. Why I talked about Colorado coming off the ice and the, and the experience was when I was with Pittsburgh. I didn't play the last few games in the finals. I wasn't suited up because Paul Coffey. Remember Paul oh, Coffey? Yeah. He no had slouch. he had broken his jaw, come back from injury just to play power play. So they put they we dressed seven defensemen. So I played all the way up through until the last few games and then I didn't suit up for that. So I was still ran on the ice and all that. So the Colorado experience was better. Do you remember all the teams you were on? Because I noticed you were, you were really a journeyman at times. Yeah, you want me to yeah, get some time? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I started off, got drafted by the Whalers, uh, traded to the Penguins for a short time, went over to Italy for a year, uh, got traded to the Quebec Nordiques. Quebec Nordiques there for three years, we moved to Colorado. Turned into the Avalanche. Turned Thanks, into the Avalanche. I was hoping you would do that. Uh, and and the from the Avalanche, spent two years there. Went to the uh, Ducks for a year. Went Anaheim to, Ducks. Yep, went to St. Louis Blues for four years. Went to the Dallas, Dallas. Stars for two years. Back to St. Louis. After and you one. had a 40 goal season when you went back. Am I correct to St. Uh, Louis? Or was it the first the time? The first stint in right. St. Louis. Right, 40 yeah. goals, which is an amazing mark for a hockey player. Now, of all the teams you mentioned, I would imagine St. Louis Blues probably had the most history in the locker room and the arena that they play in. Bobby Hall played for St. Louis. Uh, and uh, there used to be a guy named uh, Unger, I believe. Stan Unger, I think his name was, that played uh, for St. Louis. That was a defenseman. Uh, and uh, so they must uh, was that interesting playing in Bobby Hall's house? St. Louis, obviously winning a cup, you're going to have the greatest experience. But St. Louis was my favorite place to play. It was it's a tremendous town. Uh, Good the, ribs, too. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, yeah. You must have been there plenty of times, oh, yeah. right? The, the people are, are tremendous. And, I, you know, I know a lot of Red Sox fans, obviously here in Boston, but when I was surprised to see Peter Gammons when they ranked yeah. the top baseball city is St. Louis. Oh. Uh, and I can see why. I mean, it's just the people there, the, the, they treat the athletes so well. They support you, but... They don't get on you too hard where they're really criticizing. And I think we, if we listen to talk radio around, <laughs> around you know Boston, you know we're all over our app. Exactly. <laughs> uh, it's amazing because we have we could talk to you forever and ever, but uh, we got to close for now. But I want to ask you about your charity thing that you do because that's very cool and very important. What do you do with that? 
We have a charity game that we play at Cushing Academy every year, and we pick, choose a different family. Uh, Dave Napolitano, who's a state policeman, uh, puts it together, and we choose a different family to raise money for. We sell it out uh, every year, and uh, it's a great event this year. It's for a, for a family that, uh, unfortunately, Dad passed away at 53 years old, and they have a, uh, a son and, and daughter. Son has autism, so we're going to raise money for that family and, and hopefully help them out. Now, if somebody wanted to donate after the fact, is there a way to donate after the fact? Is there a website? Um, I, I think uh, you would contact Dave Napolitano directly to do that because we do most of the fundraising right there at the arena, but uh, we'd have to contact him directly. Scott, I want you back on the show sometime soon, man. Thank you. Great stuff. Uh, give it up. It's Scott Young, my friends. <laughs> amazing. What an amazing career. Amazing story. Our first hockey player and our first Olympian live at the same time. You know what? It's uh, Scott Young, and we're coming back with a lot more of Scorch's PFG TV live on Fox 25. Welcome back to Scorch's PFG TV, live on Fox 25 and at ScorchesPFGTV.com. So let me see. We had an Olympic guy, a Stanley Cup winner, and now we have a Music Magazine Award winner. The Limelight Magazine winner for the best new song of the year, doing the song Wicked. It is our pal Sarah Lakita and the Problematics of Scorch's PFG TV.
that I'm feeling them devil's soon. Thank you so much. Wow, stuff. That's a great job. Great right. job. Really good Thank job. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Now, I noticed this because I have never been able to do this in all my life. I envy you. How do you do that? How do you do that, that thing that makes you have vibrato the in vibrato your The vibrato thing that drives my, another, my mother insane. She absolutely hates it. And she points um, off the side because mom is here keeping a close eye on me. She's like, I ain't letting you go on that show. <laughs> With those two guys? <laughs> she loves you guys. So how do you, how do you develop doing that? That's the, the, the most important thing of all. Uh -huh. I think it's actually a bad habit. Honestly, lots of whiskey and cigarettes. <laughs> do you do that <laughs> like do you do that all the time? Do you practice that? Like No, it just kinda happens. When I'm more tired actually it comes out. Can you give us often. another example of it as I have you close? <laughs> I wanna see the the like, ah, yeah. Well no, but you didn't do the uh, thing with the jaw that time. <laughs> Uh, Limelight Magazine uh, award-winning uh, new song of the year, Wicked. Now, Wicked is a big, uh, you can clap for that, too. That's yeah. a great thing. You know? Oh, yeah. Great award. Wicked is such a Boston term. Did you develop this tune around that, or did you, did you have another uh, I kind meaning of, behind it? I wrote it around the idea, based on the idea that everybody has a little bit of Wicked in them. Everybody has... The potential to, to be bad sometimes, so that's what that's about. What influences do you have? Uh, definitely Beth Hart. Yeah. Um, huge, huge Beth Hart fan. I kind of like this band called Boston. Oh, I think oh you're already on the show. Oh. Oh. Say that. Oh. You're already on. Um, definitely Boston, <laughs> band, classic rock fan. Um, you, you know, all female musicians really. Um, Melissa Etheridge, Janice, Beth Hart, Bessie Smith. Bessie Smith, Otis Redding, all the old Where did you get your first start? Did you start off playing in high school band or school bands? Did people say, oh, school geek? <laughs> no, you know, I wish I could have. Um, a lot of my bandmates, they did. They played in school. I had wicked stage fright. Wicked. Ah. Um, coffee houses on Cape Cod. Really? Did some open mics when I was younger. Petted a fake ID, stole my sister's fake ID. And uh, played some open mics. <laughs> have you had trouble playing with all female bands as much as you've had successes? Have some, you know, still chauvinistic bar owners, have you encountered that? Yeah. A little bit. There's Isn't little that bit something, huh? In the year 2009, whatever it is now, <laughs> still encounter, you're still encountering Maybe that. Maybe a little behind. You, a little bit. And I think you're going to encounter that no matter what. And you just got to go in and rock out and, um, you know, prove you can play as well as or better than the boys. And on the same thing, have you ever had somebody like that? that once you played for them or they heard your stuff, they were totally blown away, so we owe you an apology, you belong here. Uh, you know, I've never actually had anybody admit that sort of thing, but um, we've definitely gotten great compliments and stuff. But What kind of music do you want to keep playing, this genre of music? Do you have, can you see yourself, because I'm on the radio, by the way. Say, but you know on the radio? What time is what that? Is radio? I'm on every day, 2 to 7. Yeah, on Rock 101, rock101fm.com, and iHeartRadio. You know so, but my point was that I don't see myself ever doing another genre of, mm -hmm. of radio, but I can see you doing different genres of music, which is ultimately going to be, uh, it's good for you, you know. Do you have a favorite type of music that you would like to do? Uh, you know, I think I just blues rock. Blues is That's really nice. where, I'm, where I'm roots. Um, I don't see myself branching out to country or anything like that, and definitely not. 90s pop, but um, really any kind of rock. I, I, I believe in not holding any restrictions as far as your genre goes. Come on, whip it up. Baby, baby, <laughs> oops, I did it again. I actually wrote that song. You wrote that <laughs> song? Oh, well. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> well, then here's a buck for the, because I can tell you, you're, you're the type that's going to, you're not the type that's going to assume your mom off in the green room is watching this on the monitor. <laughs> She's going to assume me over just about everything. She's got a lawyer with her. Did you see that? Her lawyer? Uh, Doctor, uh, Mr. Schwartz was in there saying, uh, we're going to watch everything you say to Sarah, and uh, we're going to make sure, it. you know. Uh, now, what's the favorite place you've played? Do you, do you prefer to do the, uh, do you prefer the coffee houses? Because that's where you got started. Um, kind of, you know, a lot of great venues on Cape. I've played Harry's. Um, it's a great blues joint down on Cape. Um, the Melody Tent is awesome. And really, anywhere it can be a little bit more intimate and people listen. You know, not so much sports bars as much. I, I, I mean, I appreciate playing anywhere, but. Has the internet helped get you a fan base that you may not have had uh, not being with a record company per se. Absolutely. And I think any artist nowadays kind of has to utilize the internet. Do you enjoy that? Do you like the fact that the internet, because the internet has helped, we talk about it with virtually every musician, the internet has helped and killed the industry all at the same time. Totally. Totally. You know, um, 
I kind of wish I could go back to a time where there was no cell phones, no internet. You actually had to pick up a book and read it, you know, front to, front to end. And I kind of miss that about like buying a CD and reading the inside or buying a vinyl record and, and reading about the band. I miss that aspect of the music. You know, I'm going to give credit to a different show quick. There's a show on TV land called Forever Young. It's a brand new reality show that's starting in a couple of weeks. Actually, I think it starts this weekend that we're on. And it's three younger people in their 30s living with three older people in their 70s. And one of the commercials, there's a girl in the back seat, and the old lady's looking at the GPS saying, I don't know how to use this damn thing. And the girl in the back seat is looking at a map book saying, I don't know how to use it. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's amazing that uh, it's you know, times have changed. What kind of a crowd do you get at, at an event? Um, hopefully the craziest ones. Um, you know, it's a huge uh, variety of people, honestly. Women, men, young, old, it's a um, great variety. Also, live on Scorch's PFG TV. Watch this. Hi, everybody. I'm Sibby Hashin, and tonight I'd like to present Sibs Vids. I get the opportunity, and I'm honored and privileged to show a video that I've taken somewhere in this wonderful country of Oz, supported by one of the songs that my old band, Ernie and the Automatics, just released. I want you to sit back, get your favorite drink. Get a smoke, put your feet up, relax, and enjoy this week's fit.
Dr. Scorch's PFG TV. What a show so far. Oh, what a great yeah, show. I mean, uh, and we're very much loving the fact we are now on Fox 25. Oh, yeah. Fox. Yeah. We're going big time. And I'm so excited about this. Our guest, our, our, our special guest of the night is one of the oldest comedians ever. Oh. Uh, Aristophanes actually got lines <laughs> from this guy. Many different kinds of lines, including comedy lines. Uh, this is our pal Steve Sweet. Oh, yeah. Scorch's PFG TV. Hi, <laughs> good, sit down. What is this? That's yeah, good. Uh, yeah, this Jesus. is the future. Yeah, yeah, of... Thanks a lot. What an introduction. <laughs> this is the future of the Yeah, you know, I've done over. <laughs> let me tell you something, all right? Since I got that introduction from Scorch's P I S S show, I've done over 20 something <laughs> movies, some about Mary, me, myself, and Irene. And yeah, you know, no one could be madder at me the way my career has ended up in the third floor of a freaking abandoned building in Framingham <laughs> with a bald-headed host from freaking New Hampshire. Sibby, I'm, su I'm surprised at you putting a knife in me. I'm sad. These are called feelings. What's your name, Scorch? Yeah, you can come whatever you want, man. You're yeah. the, you're the, you're the uh, superstar. But anyway, I take what I can get. You shouldn't make fun of old people. I've been very depressed, if you want to know the truth. Why is that? Well. I don't want to get to the cause of the depression, but what I did was, I went to a veterinarian the other day, and the guy said, where's your dog? Where's your... I said, my apartment's too small. It wouldn't be fair to the dog. He said, so what are you doing here? I said, I want you to put me to sleep. <laughs> he said, what? I said, you know, I want you to put me down. Yeah. So, uh, and he said, what are you, crazy? I said, do I look crazy? <laughs> do I? Do I look crazy? I look like those guys you run away from in the subway. <laughs> so he said, uh, I said, so you're not gonna do it? He said, no. I said, of course, I said, so will you fix me? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, fix me, you know, neuter me, you know. He said, this is what he said to me, he said, and I know you're a dog lover. He said, you're a little mangy. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll groom you. So he gave me a chew toy and anyway, listen, <laughs> I am here, you know, because you were talking about, you know, your love of animals or whatever yeah. you're lying Aww. about. I am here uh, for a very special cause that I'm involved in. I am running a 10K Sunday for the restless leg syndrome. <laughs> and uh, as you can see, they're very restless. <laughs> and I also am afflicted, and I know this is just comedy to you people with the Irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> so I try to crap Sibby, and I can't because my legs are so restless. It's very oh. sad. Oh. And uh, then there's a million man march in Washington, of course, for erectile dysfunction. And we are gonna march, Sib, and I hope to see you there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so listen, I've been waiting two hours. Start firing some questions at me so right, I can get out of question, here. first question, how are yeah. your two dogs going? I love your two dogs. I got two great dogs, and I also have a good friend named Sibby, who is absolutely, out of millions of men, the worst loser on the golf course. <laughs> he pouts, he storms off, and he, he takes my money all the time. And does now, you, wait a minute, how do you lose I know. and then take somebody's well, money? Well, I mean, the, the one time you've lost, and he's living off The Rock. His daughter is with The Rock. <laughs> we don't tell people the that. Rock, the Rock is sending him money. <laughs> and now we owe the WWE money for mentioning him. Now, <laughs> now a lot of late night hosts do use toothpicks, and I know that you're starting a trend with that. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, anyway, you're, you're, uh, I've been watching this show. It's a great show. Uh, that's it. Is my segment over? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Oh, I want, can can I relay a funny yeah. story? Yeah, go ahead. With me and Steve? Yeah. Because yeah. we go way back. I mean, yeah. I was a big fan of his, you know, going to shows, and he used to, he'd see me and give me these yeah. looks, you know. Yeah. Then I'd see him, and a couple of weeks later, he finally he goes, you know what? I said, I think this guy's connected. You know, he thought, and yeah. I finally yeah. introduced myself. I said, and we've been golfing buddies for the yeah. longest time, but we also yeah. were judges on the community audition show. Yeah. Right. And... One of the years, a couple of years ago, Steve was on the final show, yeah. and I was really disappointed with the selection they made. Right. And just to give you some, some legs, 
Uh, I've sang uh, harmony with Brad Delp on two world tours. Mm. I sang on record and live with Sammy Hager, and mm. I also sang live and on record with uh, Rick Derringer. So I like to think I know what I'm saying about vocals. Right. Anyway, I wasn't really happy with the selection they made for the grand prize winner. So I call up Steve and I go, Steve, I go, what the hell's going yeah. on? How did you pick her? What are you out of your freaking mind? You know, don't you know anything? Right. And he says, you know what he says to me? He says, Go f yourself. <laughs> and he hangs wow. up the phone. So I wait a couple of weeks. Yeah. I call him back. I go, hey, Steve, hi, this is Sibby. You know what? I already did go f myself. And it was good. <laughs> well, and then I said, let me finish. And I said, can we go off later on today? He goes, sure. Yeah. So you know let what? Me, let that me tell you a good friend. You can tell your buddy friend. to go screw. Yep. You well, let me tell you my version of the story, uh -oh. okay? <laughs> <laughs> because as you know, I sang harmony with John Lennon and Paul McCartney. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm the first to admit that I don't know anything about music. But what Sibby does is he takes these 12, 13-year-old children <laughs> and he crushes their self-esteem. <laughs> They're, they're sitting there wide-eyed in innocent little faces. And they'll, they'll look at them and say, think about Walmart! <laughs> and then the parents will come up to you afterwards. You know, it's, it's a great, I love doing the show, but the parents will come up to you and, uh, do you know how old my daughter is? I don't know, 14? Yeah, she's only 14. Why don't you give her a 10? You know, so, yeah, you're right, Sip. I should have... That's all right. You won. You know what? No, you know what? No, I got kicked off. No, no, no. I got kicked off. No, no, no. You so. know what? I voted for the person that you liked on that, uh -huh. but I was over. I was overruled uh, by Joyce Cole Haywood. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell her to go f herself. Well, I got kicked off because they, they had <laughs> some nasty rumors about me and Joyce in the back room, and that, not, you know, so I'm gone. Yeah. Oh, so my rumors worked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know what? Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. This show, I mean, the momentum it's gotten. <laughs> anyway. Um, Can I ask you one question? Yes. I know you have, you've had a stellar movie career. And I actually have been in the biggest movies of the summer, twice. Back to School, if anyone remembers that, yep. and Something About Mary. Right. And I was in Me, Myself, and Irene. And I just did one called The Makeover. It was on uh, ABC. It sucked. And uh, <laughs> my part sucked. But I've done a lot of independent movies. And I'm producing two things for Showtime and Comedy Central. So I met, like, an executive. You guys have an executive producer. Yeah. yeah. And, yep. you know, he's dressed worse than I am. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm an executive producer. There you go. So You know what the question I got about is? Yes. And, uh, What's it? Uh, something about Mary. Yes. Was that it classic real? Classic scene. Was it real? Exactly. I... You know they cut that out on TV all the Do time. Do they? Yeah. No. My wife doesn't even think it's part of the show. Right. But they have this scene where yeah. every I'm... guy's done it. Accidentally zipped up his right. uh, his pack, his uh, nutsack there, whatever. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and it's and they show that in the movie. Right. right? It well. What it, was that? It wasn't Ben Stiller's thing. Was it your Was it your package? No. Let me. <laughs> wow. See, is the it, level, is the cable, level of huh? questioning on this show is let, let me just, I don't, I don't like to get into this, but <laughs> I am going to take a moment to talk about my package. <laughs> <laughs> when women see me naked, they always say the same thing. <laughs> I can't believe you're white. Anyway, um, <laughs> this is why... As I mentioned Excuse earlier, me. erectile Excuse dysfunction Excuse is such me. an important Excuse issue. Excuse me. Yes. Steve, I don't get that. I know. But you're, you're from New Hampshire. I'll do it slow. <laughs> hey, listen, I know we go out to New Hampshire. You New Hampshire people. I go into New Hampshire. At the top of the sign, Sibby, it says, welcome to New Hampshire. Bienvenue. At the Paul. bottom, it says, bienvenue. <laughs> I've been in New Hampshire a number of times. No one's ever come up to me and said, oh, bonjour, monsieur. Comment allez-vous? Bienvenue. <laughs> it's more like that. Uh, there's a baya over there. But I want to congratulate the people of New Hampshire on that Kingalunach Highway there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is it? Kangamangas <laughs> Highway. That is a... I like your version better. <laughs> This is your show. I should be looking at you. No, it's okay. I, I don't want to look at you. Go ahead. Look at you. I, I was on Letterman, and uh, people say, how was it? I said, I don't remember. I, I just did it. You know, it's kind of like the 80s. Right. If you were there, 
you know. But uh, I've had a, one of the, the best thing about this business, and you feel the same way because we've had a lot of conversations. I have worked with people in my field that were my heroes. I worked with George Carlin. Unbelievable. I followed Richard Pryor at the Comedy Store. I was good friends wow. with Rodney Dangerfield. So, you know, <laughs> now, that, now that I have one foot in the grave, I... <laughs> You're here on our show, thank you. You know, <laughs> getting back to death, because it's so important well to talk one. about this. <laughs> I, this is what I want to do. What do they call it when they burn you? Cremate. They cremate you. Are you stoned? <laughs> <laughs> Kind of, kind of, I've never seen him this focused. Anyway, so this is what I want to do. Sarah, by the way, great music. Great music. Um, so I want them to cremate me, get my ashes, put them in an ashtray, dump them on a carpet, and I want David Oreck himself <laughs> with his latest vacuum cleaner to vacuum me up. What do you think? Uh, I would like to see you get sucked up by an orc. Yes, that would be kind of cool, yes. We started out on the wrong foot. So now, yes. you, you've been on Letterman, you've been in some of these movies, now you've made it to the top, so your career is actually getting better as you're getting older. So Where do we go to? All over the place. We go to seven, eight, ten homes now that we're on five. Ten. So we're going as far as west as Wayland and as oh, far as, east as Waltham, Quincy, something like that? We're, we're going from Quincy to Hull. Uh, and then maybe from Quincy to Dorchester. Yeah. Okay. So we get a All good right. signal, yeah. Well, for those of you who ever, you know, I know there's a big difference. The South Shore and the North Shore. They act like it's Germany. There should be like a wall. It's like there's not that much difference, I hate to tell you. But anyway, Quincy is the home not only of two presidents, but it is the greatest place in the world for an emergency manicure, pedicure, <laughs> Holy crap, or massage. Yeah. You know, this audience sucks, I'm going to tell you right now. This is, this is A material. Oh, this, is, this is A stuff. Oh, man, I know. Like, I'm the only it. one laughing is the executive producer. He looks like a homeless guy. But I like him. So uh, this has been a real thrill. I have absolutely nothing to plug. Oh, yes, I do. This is Fox, right? Yes. Right. I have a show that's coming on on Fox. It's going to be on Sundays. I am the host. It's a reality show, Sibby. It's called Catch an Illegal Alien. <laughs> now, we are shooting them at Home Depots all over the country. <laughs> now, this is how the show works. <laughs> One guy runs up the aisle, you know, and you go by the usual guy that gives you directions at home. Oh, yeah, I don't know where it is, maybe. <laughs> and if you catch the illegal alien before the other guy, you and your family get a trip to his country of origin. So, <laughs> so you can go to the Dominican Republic, the, you know, Guatemala. It's kind of, we're, we're very excited. So this is it, the end of my life. <laughs> Thank you for witnessing it. Oh, by the way, Steph, I was very disappointed because, I hope I can get through this, I really thought I had a shot at being the Pope. Oh, yeah, I, I would have liked the hat, the slippers, <laughs> the Pope mobile, get up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I were Pope, here's what I'm doing. I'm bringing back two places that you kids don't know about. But I remember them growing up. They're called Purgatory and Limbo. Kind of a, kind of a Malden Everett feel to them. <laughs> now, Limbo was your soul. It's just kind of rocketed. It's kind of the NASA program. Now purgatory, God looks at your life and says, Sib, come on, you've been a dick. Right. But, Sorry, God. But, but I'm not sending you to Lynn. So, <laughs> so you're going to stay in Everett for a while. Oh, man. You know what? Uh, hey, gonna, thank you. Thank I'm you very much. Come back on again. All right, thank you. You've got to give it up. It's Tweet Tweeny from Tweeny Playhouse. How was that? Was that very luxurious? That was good. There you go. Uh, Steve Sweeney on Scorch PMT TV. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. We're coming back. We're going to close out our very first Made for Fox TV show on Scorch's PFG TV. We're coming right back.
Wow, so that wraps up our very first Made for Fox TV show. I want to thank our special guests, Sarah and Lisa, uh, Sarah Lakita and Lisa Dario. You can't forget about them. Scott Young, oh Olympic player, that professional so hockey great. player, and so much and, more. And of course, the one and only. Steve Sweeney. Thank oh, you all yeah. for coming out to the show. It was a great show. Uh, start next week. I had a ball. Next week, we're going to talk to you about the PFG spot. Now, you might be able to become one of the hotties, one of the Scorch's hotties on the PFG spot. So for now, for my pal, Sibby, uh, and for myself, check out ScorchesPFGTV.com for everything else. I will see you next week right here live on Fox 25. See you later. Bye. <laughs>